Hey everyone, I'm Andrea Praber with Great Expectations Realty and today is Monday, February 28th, so it's time for What's Up Ocala. Ha! Oh, the drama, the drama that happened over this weekend. It is all over the Facebook pages for local. Um, can't wait to share this with you. It's some craziness. But I do want to remind you to go ahead and click that subscribe button. We definitely need some more subscribers and that means that this channel has been educational or entertaining or whatever for you, please go ahead and share some of these videos with those that you know and love. All right, now let's get into it. So if you remember last week, I was telling you about this winter carnival, this Marion County, um, excuse me, win I guess it was a winter carnival. I don't know. It was some kind of carnival. So it was Marion County Carnival and fair. And I was like, wow, I didn't even know Marion County had a fair. I kind of felt a little out of it, but that's okay. So I was like, okay, y'all, here's, you know, they've got alligator wrestling and um, all this other stuff going on. Well, I actually had um, a home buyers workshop and then I was meeting actually with somebody that I met through YouTube um, to show me his subdivision. And so I got, I just wasn't able to get down to the, the fair. I apparently missed out on all of the drama. Okay, so apparently it was like really, 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 really poorly designed fair. So um, they have like this carnival and everything and it took like an hour to an hour and a half just to park your car. So apparently there was a lot of people that really, really wanted to go to the Marion County Fair. Well, Come to find out, once they got in, finally, just to get into the place, it was like over an hour, hour and a half, um, they get in and it was not Marion County standards. We'll say that. It was absolutely mayhem, uh, very worn out, wore down, whatever. Um, there were some just sh crazy shady shenanigans going on and stuff. So everybody that went was really disappointed and they were like putting on Facebook, like if you're coming to the fair, don't come, do not come, do not come. So, um, so it's all over. So of course, everybody, now it's over, they're all talking on Facebook about how Marion County had such a terrible fair. Well, <laughs> well, Kent Gwynn actually went on Facebook today and was like asking questions about this fair that was going on. And he's like, was there like, cause they were all talking about how bad the traffic was and how bad um, the whole presence was and how it was just really just kind of shady and awful. And uh, so he was asking questions like, you know, was there a police presence? Cause they're supposed to be when you have anything like that in an event or whatever. I mean, he knew nothing about it. Okay. At all. And I'm like, that doesn't sound right. Cause even though he's the city of Ocala mayor, he still knows what's going on. I mean, it obviously he goes to the meetings and stuff with, um, with the, Marion County commissioners and stuff. So it was just kind of weird that he didn't know anything about it. Um, so then, then he like comes back on and he's like, this had nothing to do with Marion County. Um, and then one of the um, commissioners, Kathy Bryant was on there and she was just like, whoa, this was not a Marion County fair. It had Marion County, like it was in Marion County, but it had nothing to do with the county at all whatsoever. And then it was just like the back and forth all over there. It was just, it was crazy. Okay. So apparently this is just some random people that keep going to different towns and stuff and setting up a fair and doing it really quick. And it's like terrible. They are not set up right for it. It's way <laughs> shady and they're just kind of getting away with it and they're calling it, you know, whatever county they happen to be, it's that county fair. But it has nothing to do, it was not organized, possibly not even permitted. It was awful. And it was, I did notice that I didn't really have a lot of time to like find out anything about it because it just like popped up and I'm like, how do I not know anything about this? This is so weird. So obviously me, like everybody else that promoted or helped promote or whatever, um, in any way, shape or form should have done more research on it. But um, personally, I kind of wish I had gone just to have been like, you know, enjoying the mayhem. <laughs> but yeah, I'm kind of crazy like that. So, um, so yeah, it was a little bit crazy. So if anybody went down to it, please share how it went and what happened because it is crazy. The tea is crazy about this. So I'm just dying to know. Anyway, 
I'm really sad I didn't get to go just so, I mean, not that sitting in an hour of crazy, like just getting into the parking lot, I probably wouldn't have put up with that. But at the same time, I'm really missing out on this gossip fest that is on Facebook right now of this crazy fair that happened. So yeah, I'm not even sure, like really questionable on insurance and everything. Like <laughs> it was just shady, crazy, crazy. According to what everybody is saying about it. So I did post a comment in the, in the thing saying, okay, obviously this is something that we need here. There's a definite desire to go to a Marion County Fair. Why don't we just have a Marion County Fair and do it right from the start? Um, I haven't had a response back on that, but I'm like, you know, obviously if there's like a demand for it, it should be supplied, right? Um, so it just got <laughs> just kind of laughing so much about all the mayhem and all the comments and stuff online. So anyway, big, big drama in a small town. I don't know. <laughs> so we also got, in case, in case you're wondering, I'm just going to be laughing about this probably for the next week or so. So just excuse me. <laughs> um, over at uh, OMCAR, which is the Ocala Marion County Association of Realtors, they actually came out with the yearly market detail for 2021, which is awesome because it has all of, you know, the single family homes and mobile homes and manufactured homes and townhouses and condos and all of that. And we kind of went into a little bit, but this report actually is even more detailed than what I had seen previously. So I guess they finished gathering their info. And, uh, and if you want, I can actually send this information to you. Just, you know, send me over an email. My email address is my first name and my last name at gmail.com. So it's A-N-D-R-E-A-P-R-O-E-B-E-R -E 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 at gmail.com or check the description. It's always in the description below. Anyway, um, one of the most interesting things that I saw were the amount of houses. And like I said, these are single family homes that were paid in cash because we constantly have people asking, well, I have cash. I sold my house somewhere else um, in a much more expensive area, um, such as like Miami, California, you know, more expensive definitely for the same thing. Um, and anyway, I pay, I, I, you know, sold my house over there. I'm going to buy in Marion County. So I obviously have, you know, I'm just going to pay it in cash. So I'm going to get a better deal because it's in cash, right? Um, and we keep trying to explain to people, no, there's a lot of people that are buying with cash right now because that same uh, scenario. And then a lot of them are like remote workers and stuff. So they can pretty much live anywhere. I mean, if you can get paid, you know, New York money, but live in Marion County, Florida, hey, you know, get the house with a pool and sit there and do your remote work. It's, you know, it's amazing. Um, so a lot of people are doing that, which means that the, um, the cash buyers are really high right now but I didn't realize how high. 38.9% of the buyers in Marion County last year, so almost, almost 40% of the buyers that bought single family homes last year in Marion County were cash buyers. That's huge, that is huge. I did not realize it was that incredible how many people were actually doing cash purchases. And that has definitely not gone down. We are seeing a lot of cash purchases. You really consider how few houses were distressed sales. So it's not like this is, these are investors. These are regular, you know, regular buyers that are buying their homes in cash. So um, we really don't have that many, you know, distressed sales because we didn't have that many foreclosures at all for years, for like two years now. So because of COVID and everything. So uh, now we're starting to see foreclosures hit the market. I've definitely seen um, a difference in the market. I don't know if people have gotten a little nervous because of what's going on in the news and stuff. Um, but I have definitely seen within the last week or two, there's more houses hitting the market, which is really good news. Um, so finally, get up off them houses. <laughs> So um, we, of course, have a lot of new construction. We're going to continue having a, new, a lot of new construction, but we are actually seeing, um, at least here with us at Great Expectations Realty, we're seeing um, more houses actually hit the market. So that's really good news. All right. What else did I see that was interesting? Um, median time to contract. So the average time that houses are, um, you know, going 
going to contract. So basically how quickly are they selling? Um, in 2020, it was actually pretty quick at 39 days. In 2021, it was 13 days. It's a big difference. So yeah, that's kind of crazy, right? Um, we do have, we did have more listings in 2021 than 2020, which was also interesting. Um, in closed sales in 2021, we had over 8,000 closed sales for new homes, uh, or excuse me, for single family homes. Um, so it was about a 19% increase over 2020. So I thought that was interesting. There's a lot more statistics on there, but I'm just kind of doing the highlights if you guys don't mind. Um, and then let's see what else? Oh, okay. Yeah. 38%. That was the one that was just like, could not believe 38%. Oh, the average sales price that I did find interesting, um, as well. So I wanted to share that. So 2016, it was about 161,000 was the average sale price. 2017, it was at 175,000. So it went up, but not drastically. 2018, about 194,000. So a lot of my videos on YouTube, you'll see, I was like, oh yeah, you know, it's about 200,000, about 200,000. That was then. So <laughs> I don't know if I should just remove those. They were really good videos though. So just keep in mind the date. Um, 2019, again, the average sales price was 207,000. 2020, 227,000. 2021, 293,000. So we had a 28% more than 28% change in the average sales price in one year. So everybody that bought in 2020, they're sitting pretty, they got some equity, like you wouldn't believe on their house. Um, that is just, that's crazy. I mean, for an average house that you bought in 2020, you probably made $50,000 for doing little to nothing. So that is, that is awesome. That really is amazing. Um, if you bought at that point, if you didn't buy, I strongly encourage everyone to buy. So, um, that just means you weren't listening to me and you know, mm. <laughs> that sounded so female, right? I'm like, mm, I really like saying, I told you so. I, I think maybe it's a wife thing. I'm not sure. Anyway, uh, median percent of original list price received. Okay. Here's another one that we get frequently with buyers, um, in, 2020, the, okay, so it's basically how many, huh, how many lit houses are selling at list price? And so, you know, sometimes we'll see like, you know, the house prices were reduced or um, house prices were increased or whatever. Um, but how many of them are actually selling at list price? How dead on did we get it or are we getting it? In 2020, 97.4% were sold at list price. In 2021, 100% of the houses, 100% of the houses were sold at list price. I mean, it's dead on. Um, so while some houses are sold under the house, uh, the um, list price and some are sold over, on average, we hit it out of the park every single time. It's crazy on average. So when you're coming in as a buyer and you're like, okay, so it's listed at 220,000. What should I offer? Your realtor should be saying 220,000. That's the price. <laughs> That's the price of the house. Um, if, if your realtor says, I think it's actually underpriced and there's going to be a lot of competition on this one, then obviously you'll need to go up. If they say that house needs a lot of work, it's going to be sitting there for a pretty minute because it only can take cash or whatever, or that's just straight up ugly. Um, I think we can go under, so be it. But normally we're answering the question with list price. You better have list price. Don't try and like get a deal. It drives me crazy sometimes because sometimes it's only like $5,000. You're going to go back and forth and lose a house over five grand. That equates on a mortgage to like a dollar a month or something like it's hardly anything. Um, it's just because they feel like they have to get a deal. It's like, okay, well let's get a home warranty thrown in. Cause that's something else that you can deal with. There's other stipulations in the contract you can mess around with. Um, but the price is pretty much the price right now. And I've got the graphs and charts to prove it. 
Really love when that happens. Um, we already went over that 16, 13 days is basically what it was last year. This year, I'd have to say it's more like three days. Um, it's normally under contract within three days. So, and that's not because they didn't have offers. It's just, that's how long it takes for the buyer to see it, the buyer to make an offer, the seller to, um, review the offer or offers and sign it. And then to pend in, um, pending means that, uh, there's, a contract on it. It's no longer available for showings and stuff like that. And they are basically just waiting to close. So it's not closed. The sale has not been completed. They're waiting on like inspections and appraisal and title lien search and stuff like that. But basically they're in contract. That one's gone. Move on. So when it says pending, it's pretty much gone. Once in a while, they'll come back up on the market, but then that begs the question, why? So anyway, so this is the single family homes alone. It was like um, about 10 pages uh, just for the single family homes. But if you want the full report, which was like over 100 pages, I was like, I am so not printing that out. Uh, <laughs> but it goes over the whole county and all the different kinds of houses and all the different numbers and statistics and everything. I found the single family homes to be the most interesting. But if you want the full report, I can send it over to you. No problem. Okay, so... <laughs> Let me tell you real quick what's going on with our market watch, which is um, today we had 45 new listings. Again, this is going into the market watch, which is Marion County. However, it covers new homes. Um, it covers uh, existing homes. So new homes, it might be that they're not even built completely yet. Um, it's existing single family homes. It's condos. It's vacant land. It's commercial. And it's even leasing. So 45 houses for our entire county. That's what hit the market today. Um, 63 went pending. <laughs> so we're still going more coming off than are coming on, but 45 is better than last week. So I will take what I can get. Price increase 32. So 32 houses or properties that hit the market went through a price increase. So it's probably not, hey, this had a new roof, so it's getting a price increase. This is just, okay, the market is way different than what I expected, so we're gonna go ahead and price increase. This is this does happen, especially when it's um, maybe realtors from other areas. If you hire a realtor from Orlando, they're not gonna know Ocala. It's just, there's no way. And the same goes, like I wouldn't tell you what a house would be worth in Orlando because I'm just not as familiar with that market. I'd say, hey, if you just need a price, let me call my girl over there, Krista Torrance. She will definitely know exactly what that house should go for. And then we go from there. Um, you know, I, I know people all over the United States that would be more than happy to give you that information. I personally wouldn't because I just don't think that I know that market that well. Um, that being said, I do have agents that do know the market very well and will give you that information. But sometimes we'll have agents from like, you know, like Miami um, or, you know, Tampa or whatever, and they'll try to sell a house in Marion County. And it's just so difficult for them to know um, what the market really is because their market is so completely different. Uh, so, you know, legally I can sell anywhere in the state of Florida, but there's only certain places that I feel comfortable selling because I have agents that know those areas. Um, but yeah, other, other agents, they can, you know, they're legal, they can sell wherever, whether they know the market or not. So because they know real estate in Florida. Anyway, that being said, a lot of those agents are <laughs> idea what the market is. So that's a lot of why you're seeing these price increases and price decreases. Maybe it's newer agents and they're not really sure. Maybe it is in fact that the owner has um, put on a new roof because the insurance issue that's been arising that I talked about last week. Either way, we had 32 price increases and 17 price decreases. Like y'all, seriously, work on your numbers. Um, sold, we had 46. Uh, back on the market, we had about 11 um, expired. One, we had one expired. 
We might have a couple more tomorrow because they'll expire today and it'll come up on the market tomorrow. But really, we've just not been seeing that many expireds. And I love, love expired listings. Um, my favorite thing in the world is to go in when somebody else could not get that house sold. And I go in and I'm like, I got this. And I really just, oh, so great. I love it. Um, we definitely don't do the, you know, plop and pray mentality where you plop a sign outside and pray it sells. But... <laughs> It's so great. And my customers will tell you, I absolutely love it when they're like, yeah, it was listed before, but it didn't sell. And I'm like, I got this. <laughs> I love it. I absolutely love that. Um, all right. With John, we had two. Least, we had three. So um, kind of interesting what's going on with the market and how it changes from week to, f to week. And just watching that one, num that one thing, just that market watch every day is just so helpful. Um, but I share it with you guys once a week. All right. So this week, things to do here in Ocala. <laughs> oh, oh my goodness. I got to be really careful now. <laughs> I'm like, oh, don't send them to the fair. Okay, sorry. <laughs> Um, this week we do have the strawberry festival and I will attest to this. It is an awesome festival. Absolutely awesome. It's put up by uh, Habitat for Humanity here locally and um, they do a really great job with that. Uh, so definitely do the strawberry festival. That is this Saturday. Um, of course, we, Great Expectations Realty, have our home buyers workshop, which we do every month. Um, this one is going to be on 316. So it's a Wednesday from 5 p.m. to 7 p.m. Now keep in mind, you guys, food is here, drinks are here, it's all completely free. We have a lender here on, on hand to answer any loan questions. Um, we we go through all of the steps of home ownership and how to go from I think I should buy a home to here's how you actually close on it and I hand you the keys. So we just go over those steps. We also um, are talking about down payment assistance. There's a lot of programs with down payment assistance, including the local one, SHIP, that's S-H-I-P as in Paul. Uh, the SHIP program is basically a local program um, that will give you money to actually do the down payment or closing costs on the house. Um, and you can pay it back if you sell the house or after so many years, it actually is just free and clear and you don't owe it back. So it's a really, really great program. And they actually are looking for buyers um, because they do have money to actually give out for their down payment assistance program. So let us know if you are interested in any of that. We will put you as RSVP for our Wednesday um, 316 uh, Home Buyers Workshop. I will obviously be here. Um, and it's from 5 p.m. to 7 p.m. So it's after hours. You don't have to be there right from the start. You can stop in any time. Please don't come five minutes before because that is a lot of information to go through in the last five minutes. But any time between the five to seven is great. Uh, there is also a Florida Springs Festival at Silver Springs Park, which is a state park. It is $2 to get in, um, and they're going to be doing a whole bunch of festivities there, uh, which should be just absolutely awesome. I love, I love Silver Springs Park. It is absolutely beautiful, so definitely want to see that. We also, this Friday, have the first Friday Art Walk downtown, and there is going to be a live music from the Motowners. Uh, so it's a, a free public concert. You can walk around, you can stop into a restaurant, grab some food. The shops stay open late. It is just a really good, you know, really good time. Um, check out some of the artwork that they have. There's little booths and stuff all over. It's just basically a little small town party. Uh, absolutely love it. So definitely come to that totally free. If you want to get food and stuff like that, obviously you'll have to pay for that, but there's a lot of activities and a lot of really great entertainment. So come to that. It's Friday downtown on the square. Um, the first Friday of the month. Um, and this one is from six to nine. All right. We have from March 3rd to the 6th, we have the RV show at the Florida horse, horse park. Um, so this is a huge, like huge RV show. So if you have time to go to it, I strongly recommend you do. I'm trying to carve out some time so that I can go to it because I'm really interested to see what they're doing with, 
Um, the Sprinter van size RVs, I really am interested in that as are most people um, in my age and younger. Um, just, you know, not being too overwhelmed with a big massive RV, um, but maybe doing something more that's just kind of a conversion type thing. I don't actually want to convert a van into an RV. Um, I just don't have the time for that, but I really like the size of it. So anyway, I'm really interested in that kind of thing and checking out the variations in, in the different classes and stuff. So really cool uh, that you can go down and, and check that out. That's at the Florida Horse Park. Um, Brown's Farm is actually doing a junk in the trunk and it's 8 a.m. to 11 a.m. It's actually the first Saturday of every month, but we do have it coming up this Saturday. So it's 8 a.m. to 11 a.m. And they have like five to 10 acres where people will just pull up with their car, set everything out. And it's just a big old yard sale kind of thing. Uh, but they do have food trucks that have breakfast items and stuff like that. So, and then of course, like Brown's Farm, that's like a farmer's market type thing that they have out front too. That's really big and it's really good. Um, I'm going to check and see if they have any more of that cheesecake because they really do have some really great bakery and cheesecake items. Uh, let's see. There is a new play coming to Ocala Civic Theater, uh, and I wasn't really sure. It was called Underneath the Lintel, which I'd never heard of before, and I wasn't really sure what it was going to be about. So I went in and I read up on it, and now I'm like super excited to go to it. It's kind of um, a mystery that as you go along, it kind of, you get the clues and stuff. So it's like you're going with this guy. He's the librarian who received a book, it was returned after 113 years of being overdue. So he's trying to figure out who had this book and what in the world is going on. Um, and there's like a few small clues that were inside the book that he's trying to figure out. So um, I'm really curious to see, you know, this, how it works through and kind of curious how, what the ending is truthfully, because I didn't want to read the ending because well, then I would want to see the play. So uh, really, really wanting to see how this all works out. And he apparently goes and he's like traveling all over trying to find this person. Um, so yeah, it was all, it, it, I don't know. It looks really cool. So I'm actually excited to go and see that. Um, that one's playing March 3rd through the 20th. Um, so definitely get tickets to that if you can. It's a really great show, really great time. Um, it's received so many awards. It, it's just crazy how many awards it's received all over like Chicago and New York. And I mean, just all over LA. It's a big deal. All right. But yeah, you get to slowly solve the mystery with the librarian as he travels around. Uh, okay. We also have the ninth annual autism superhero walk over at Shalom Park and that's 10 a.m. March 5th and it is strongly encouraged for you to dress as your favorite superhero. So I thought it was really cool. I have absolutely no superhero attire. I do have some costumes and stuff like we did a weeping angel from Doctor Who and some other stuff, but I don't have any superhero things. I do have a big tight T-Rex inflatable costume. So I'm thinking maybe that'll work if I put a cape on it. Not sure. Anyway, but that is going on March 5th. Um, and then we have last but definitely not least is the Santos Trailhead Fat Tire Festival. Now, in case you guys didn't know, Omkar, Omkar, Ocala um, has one of the absolute best fat tire, you know, like mountain biking trails um, in the entire United States. I know it's so weird because we don't really have mountains here. Um, but I mean, these bikes go airborne on some of these trails. It is miles long. It's a huge trail. Um, it actually meets up with the Greenway, the Cross Florida Greenway. Um, they've got, it's just absolutely amazing trails. So people come from all over the nation to actually go on these trails. And they're actually having a fat tire festival. And that's through Ocala Mountain Bike Association. The meetup is at 7 a.m. So if you wanted to do that, if you have any interest in doing anything with um, the mountain bikes, this would be the opportunity. So if you want to read up on it, the Ocala Mountain Bike Association has a Facebook page and they will definitely give you all that information. And there's even some videos on the trail itself where you can really see, I mean, these guys are like flying, literally airborne over top of some of these hills and stuff. It's pretty cool. Uh, but yeah, that's over at Santos Trailhead, which is um, kind of on 301, 441 Pine, um, just leaving Ocala, um, going 
towards Bellevue. So I don't know. I will definitely have to go in and get some videos, I guess. <laughs> I'll probably have like Carlos or Jesse do that because both of them are into bike riding and going like crazy like me. I'm I'm more like road bike and you know just give me nice even <laughs> boring ground. <laughs> but yeah, they I'm not one for flying over hills. I value my existence and all of my bones in where they're at. I don't want to do that. <laughs> but I love watching it. It's very cool to watch. So um, definitely check out some of those videos and stuff. I thought it was really cool that they're doing a festival and, um, yeah, I guess that's about it. So thanks so much for watching. I really appreciate you guys really do. Every time that you make comments or subscribe or share my videos, I feel encouraged to keep making them. So thank you very much for that. And I will talk to you again soon. Bye.